Hey there everyone, uh, the Yankee Messiah 401 here. So you can see I am outside. I'm going to be doing a lot of my videos outside this summer. Um, can't believe it. Summer is almost here. Uh, it feels like summer out here today. So um, I wanted to do this uh, review of the Dark Side of the Ring. Of course, last week I didn't get to do... The Dark Side of the Ring Nick Gage one, but I did it um, during a live video when I was talking about the passing of New Jack. But this episode that happened last night was the collision in Korea, and I thought this was a great episode of Dark Side of the Ring. And I think there's like a lot of more stories that needs to be shared about this, but what we got here was tremendous and the number of people that were on this it was kept low i mean i would have loved to see more like scott steiner rick steiner uh chono uh, masahiro chono i know masahiro chono speaks english um some of the japanese wrestlers that were involved i know the language barrier was probably going to be an issue they did at least they got Antonio anoki to talk and they did have him speaking Japanese and they had the translations in English. And then you had that reporter from CNN talking about, you know, the history. And that's one of the things that I'm not really surprised with when it comes to North Korea. Because I've been following the North Korea story for a couple of years. And... This goes way back to when Donald Trump was president. If you remember, four years ago, uh, we were almost at the brink of war. I mean, a war that could have been a nuclear war that could have killed billions of people. But eventually, you know, things didn't really escalate. We had some peace. Um, but yeah, we all know North Korea, they don't like us. They don't like the United States. They look at us as like we're the devil's incarnate so to say because of the the korean war and all of the things that have happened throughout the years and yes you know we're still in a ceasefire with north korea so yeah to cool scorpio eric bischoff scott norton uh they were the ones that did a lot of the talking and they all came off well. I mean, Scott Norton, man, especially the, the stuff that he told, you know, the, the whole situation with the pool table, they were playing pool. All of a sudden, one of the balls just went out of the pool table and the North Korean officials were pissed about it. Um, also, the fact that, you know, he was talking to his wife and then his phone got disconnected and for a moment you had to feel bad for scott norton because it looked like scott norton could have been killed over there um and speaking of more scott norton and tuco scorpio i mean the exchange over how tough hawk is that was fun i mean tuco scorpio man came out as a little bit of a sociopath in this um if i'm gonna be honest because he was the one that was trying to kill Hawk uh, in North Korea. Eventually, that did not happen, thank God. But I want to see this show now, um, this collision in Korea. But you know WWE will never put it on Peacock or WWE Network if you live outside of the United States. So it was some good stuff this week, and it's still crazy that WCW New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, did this event. And I know WWE, they get a lot of shit when it comes to the shows in Saudi Arabia. Yes, you know, I have been one of the critics of it. You know, I've said that show has been trash. And, you know, and of course, you know, that incident that they had one time with uh, the talent uh, of what was it they were stuck in Saudi Arabia that's probably going to be a dark side of the ring uh, one of these days but 
that show in North Korea, that was on a whole new level. Compare it to what we see with these uh, WWE super shows in Saudi Arabia. But, yeah, there was kind of like this one story. Hulk Hogan, you know, who was the biggest wrestler at that time, he turned down a payday to wrestle in front of the largest crowd. And that's one of the what if things. What if, if he did not turn that down? We could have been seeing Hogan. Biggest wrestler out there going up against Antonio Inoki. I mean, I know they've gone head to head before in Japan, but I mean, Antonio Inoki, I gotta say this too. The guy was treated like a hero over there. And I think it was because, you know, you know, he was trained by a North Korean wrestler. So it. That, that's just like really cool though. At least they did like a Japanese wrestling icon. The rest of them, they're like, yeah, we don't know who these guys are. We could care less, but Anoki versus Flair, and I'm going to try to compare it to like a movie. It had like a Rocky Four vibe to it. You know, think of it. You know, Drago going up against Rocky. You know, Rocky going into enemy territory. Ric Flair wrestling in enemy ter territory against an icon in Anoki. So yeah, if you want to know a lot about this stuff um, with this event, I definitely would want you guys to check this out. Uh, next week, Ultimate Warrior, that's going to be interesting. Um, I can tell you that right now, I'm going to have a lot to say about that because... You got the A&E show, that's going to happen, on the biography on Sunday, and now you got Doc Side of the Ring on Thursday. So, what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to try to do a compare, and I'm going to try to compare the biography show and Doc Side of the Ring next week when it comes to my review. Definitely check it out. Until then, uh, please subscribe to the channel. I don't know if I'm going to have some Yankee content out tonight. Um... I might. Until then, I am out. Peace.